Good day, fellow learners. Once again, I'm your mentor, Ray. This is mentor Ray Gapus joining you for another session on the entrepreneurial mind. And this time, we're going to talk about business planning. So stick around and enjoy as we engage in a teaching and learning session for the concept, the business plan, the hows and whys of it. And take note, class, this is just part one. So our objectives for this course at the end of the session, the learners, that's you and I, shall define business plan, discuss the significance of, business, of a business plan, and identify the processes involved in the creation of a business plan. So let's begin our discussion. When you were actually exposed into the subject matter, maybe you have a lot of questions like, why do I have to have this subject? Why the, do I need to have an entrepreneurial mind where in fact, I am here to finish a course in nursing. However, as you have noted in our previous lessons on the entrepreneurial mind, it's also important for us to nurture the other side of our personality. And that includes nurturing our other intelligences that could help us come up with entrepreneurial ideas and eventually turn it into a business venture. So all of those questions that are running into your mind could be there. And there are times in which you are asking yourself, I bet, this question. So ano ba dapat ang mauna? Yung plano or yung negosyo? Is it the plan or the business? If I would come up with a plan first, when do I put up the business? If I'm going to put up the business first, when should I be writing the plan? So this has become a chicken and egg dilemma, actually. So ano ba dapat ang mauna? Yung plano yung negosyo? Don't think of it as like putting a house. Of course, some people would have a plan before, before they put up their house. Okay, Others would not have any plan at all. They will try to put, their own, uh, put up their own house based on gut feel alone. Now the question is, what are the experts saying about this specific question? One thing that should uh, actually make you curious about what could be the correct answer to this question. And that's one of the questions that we are going to talk about today as we engage in this teaching and learning session. So whatever question that you have in mind, one of those questions that you need to first ask yourself is, what business is that of yours? So anong negosyo yung bubuksan mo? Napaka-importante yung tanong yan. So let's begin with the, the components of a business plan, beginning with the eight questions that I need to ask myself before writing a plan. You need to ask yourself these two. Okay, now, why am I highlighting the word myself? Because when you are an entrepreneur, everything begins with yourself. Your primary resource, product, and eventually selling point would be yourself. That's why you have to be able to package yourself and live up to that package and eventually take note. You have to learn how to market yourself. So it all begins, therefore, with the ambition. You ask yourself, what do you want? And where would you want to be? Or where would you want to go? Now, if you would remember, our parents would usually ask us these questions when we are a kid. What do you want to be when you grow up? Or in Tagalog, ano ba gusto mo maging paglaki mo? I remember a conversation between a mother okay, and her child. Sabi niya, anong gusto mong maging anak paglaki mo? Ba, ang ganda ng sagot ng bata. I want to be a mother someday. Pero nalungkot ang nanay kasi sabi niya, tumigil ka boyet ha? <laughs> Of course, that's just a joke. Okay. <laughs> but just to drive at the point, why do we have to begin with ourselves? Because when we plan to come up with a business, there are certain factors that could interfere with how 
we are supposed to be presenting ourselves to our investors and to our customers. Okay? And the basic question would be, eh, ano ba ang iha-highlight ko? Okay? Some people may not be intellectually capable, so kinulang, but they are financially able, may pera. Okay? Some people naman are, well, intellectually capable, may utak, but financially incapable. Parang nung nag-uumpisa ako as an entrepreneur, I didn't have anything. But as I've always been saying, the capital is the least of the concern of the entrepreneur. Because if I ask you now to check your wallet or your pockets, how much do you have there? Okay? Yung iba, sasabi nila 50 pesos. Yung iba, sasabi nila 100 pesos. What if I tell you there's a man who started a business that eventually made him a millionaire and he started with 10 pesos? Ay, exciting. Paano niya yung ginawa, sir? Okay. So this man is a college undergrad. So he got laid off. Okay, from work, natanggalan siya ng trabaho dahil hindi naman siya tapos. So, it came to a point na wala na siyang magawa, nalungkot siya, palakad-lakad na lang siya at nagpapahinga. Pero may talento itong taong ito. Dahil habang siya ay palakad-lakad at nagpapahinga, ang ginawa naman niya, inobserve niya anong nangyayari sa kanyang paligid. Okay, and what observation ang nakita niya? Nakita niya na ang daming magagandang coaching dumadaan sa lansangan at marami sa kanila ay may mga sira. So that man noticed that a lot of cars, luxury cars, could have like minor gas-gas or there could be uh, some parts that needed repainting or some parts that needed a tire block or some forms of cleaning. And he began to ask himself, bakit kaya hindi na papagawa ang mga coaching ito. So he said, ano kaya? I come up with a business that would repair these cars while the owners are asleep at night. So what he did, he reached out to his pocket and he found 10 pesos. Sabi niya, how can I start with 10 pesos? But this entrepreneurial person, eventually, ginawa niya, with the 10 pesos, he started to come up with a flyer. So pumunta siya sa computer shop, nag-type siya, nagawa siya ng flyer niya, he had it printed, and with the 10 pesos, he had like 10 flyers. Okay? So what can you do with 10 flyers? So you just reach like 10 people. So what he did, marunong ang taong to, mabilidad. He went to a high-end mall, went to the car park, looked for the cars that have like scratches or needed minor repairs, okay? And he placed the 10 flyers on the windshields of the car. Fortunately, one of the 10 gave him a call. And the first question he was asked was, you will be surprised, how long have you been doing this thing? At ang sabi niya, proudly, five years, sir. <laughs> Although, in fact, first time lang niyang gagawin. Pero sabi niya nila, sometimes it pays to fake it till you get it. Okay? So what happened was, okay, so they gave him a chance to repair that car. So what he did, he loaned uh, money from a friend as a friend to help him out fix the car while the owners were asleep. When the owners woke up the next day, they were so surprised, okay, at the product. And so, one thing led to another by word of mouth, dumami ng dumami ng dumami until this guy eventually put up his own auto repair shop that has now more than 10 branches in the country where he's living. And eventually, it had more than 3,000 employees. What do you call that thing? It's focusing on oneself. It all begins with ambition. Okay? So, you might be asking yourself, 
what are the things that you need to ask yourself? Now, let me share with you another anecdote. And this is one thing I love to share because this is real life. In one of my travels in the United States, while I was doing like test preparations classes in the US, and most of my students are nurses and some are actually not into the actual nursing job because they have yet to pass a licensure exam. And here comes a nurse who has a friend who is an, uh, an, an a licensed assistant personnel, a UAP. And then sabi ng nurse sa akin, sir, alam mo yan, hindi yan nurse. Kaklasik ko yan nung high school. But when we had a family reunion, some of us were coming in Mercedes-Benz, in BMW, but that lady came on a chopper. Wow! Naka-helicopter siya. So, what was her business? Hindi siya nurse. Paano siya yumamang ganon? She, she was actually an unlicensed assistive personnel or a nursing assistant. But she had a talent of scanning the environment for opportunities. In other words, that's the better way of saying chismosa siya. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, this lady noticed that her neighbor, who is a Russian nurse, have a lot of uh, visitors every day and she sees a lot of cars parking okay, on the, on the uh, front porch or the front area of the house of the neighbor. And so she got curious and she asked the nurse, what is going on? And the nurse said, oh, most of my friends who have elderly parents with them and nobody's taking care of them would usually bring their parents here we take care of them we feed them we give them their medications and we get paid by the hour okay so this entrepreneurial and licensed assistant personnel eventually when she bought a house she did not buy the house for luxury she bought the house having a business idea in mind so that was a single deck uh, level house, ranch type with huge parking. She just occupied one room and turned the other rooms of the house into the movie room, poker room, mini gym. And then what she did is, if the Russians can do it, the Filipino can do it. So she asked her friends who have their folks with them and if they're going for a vacation, they can simply drop by their folks and then um, pay her per hour. So from that small business, eventually it grew and it grew and it grew. And then she had her assisted living facility. And then finally, after that, she began to cater to clients with chronic conditions like COPD. And during that time, during that time, that was approximately like uh, 10 to 12 years ago, when I visited her facility, she was taking care of 23 patients with oxygen and less than 20 others without oxygen. Why do I have to highlight the one without oxygen? Because the rate then for patients with oxygen would be $1,200 per patient per day. And it's the government that pays her. And she had 23 patients who on oxygen tax. How much would that be per day? And less than 20 who are not on oxygen and the rate could be a thousand dollars per day so approximately she's earning forty thousand dollars per day that's why she's hiring her own staff nurses now what do you call that well that's luck that favored the person with an entrepreneurial mind so the RNs came in with their Mercedes, with their BMW, with their Rolls Royce, with their Porsche. She came in with her chopper. Well, with us like Ilocanos, sanay lang naman tayong sumasakay sa pasagad, sa baka, sa kalesa, sa kabayo, sa tricycle. Nung unang panahon, I never dreamt of this. What I just would want to achieve is... I want to engage into an industry where I can use my passion for teaching. So everything came in as a reward. Remember, if you are an entrepreneur, you have to be possessing the three common things so that you can market yourself. 
properly and I call it A, B, C. Okay? First, you have to be agile. When you see an opportunity, do something about it. That's what the unlicensed assistant personnel did. Next, believe that you can do it. When no one else believes in you, you, you should at least believe in yourself. Now, for me, it was actually my mother has always been the wind beneath my wings, my number one audience, the person who would usually tell me, even if I had a bad day, and that, to me, you did well. And that's what matters to me at the end of the day. And third, don't leave anything to luck. You have to deliver the goods consistently. So agility, your belief in your ability, and in consistency, you can be able to create an enterprise that would eventually define the kind of entrepreneurial mind that you have. I just hope you got inspired with that anecdote. Okay, so the first question, therefore, out of the eight that we need to ask ourselves would be, when should I write the plan? You might be surprised to know this, that experts would say, writing the plan first is a really bad idea. Okay? Writing the plan is a really bad idea. So, hindi pala dapat maunang magsulat ng business plan, sir. Does that mean that we first have to put up the business before the plan? Okay? Okay, that we will answer in a while. Now, the second question is, why is it not a good idea okay, to write the plan first? Because it might lock the entrepreneur into a false sense of security, which means when you already have a plan, you say, I will just have to follow this plan and I'll be a successful entrepreneur. No, 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 no. That will not happen because, remember this, nothing in business is permanent. What does that mean? Let's learn from uh, a, a, a lesson or two from the lyrics of a once popular song during my generation. It's, it's entitled, I Know Him So Well by Ellen Page and Barbara Dixon. Some of the lyrics would go this way. Remember, the first few stanzas would go this way. Nothing is so good, it lasts eternally. Perfect situations must go wrong. But this has never yet prevented me wanting far too much for far too long. Looking back, I could have played it differently. Won a few for more moments who can tell. Okay, so remember, nothing is so good, it lasts eternally. So which means, even business climates could be affected by government regulation, change in the taste of the customers in the market, market forces, and a lot of other factors. What is therefore important for you to note, class, is okay, whatever it is that you do, you have to base it on your life experience. Before the pandemic, I, I was traveling with our executives and we're supposed to be going for a road show in 10 countries. And uh, well, to cut the long story short, we have to rush back because the Philippines will have a lockdown. In fact, we arrived 24 hours before the lockdown <laughs> was actually implemented. Well, and then after that, I still continued to go to the office, was a workaholic every day. And then I caught COVID somewhere along the way. And it wasn't just mild, it wasn't just moderate, it wasn't severe, it was critical. The end stage of it all. And I almost saw the light, not just once, but twice. So I almost did not make it. But at the end of it all, throughout the struggles I had in those two weeks of my life, when I'm having critical COVID pneumonia, I was praying that if God would give me the chance to live my life again, what would, have, what would I need to do to deserve the reward? So in essence, it's important that you reflect what are the things that you would not have done or what are the things that you could have done better. So that lesson is important when you're planning for a business. Okay, 
So think about this. Sometimes the taste of the customers which you have initially targeted would change. And that is true because we actually cater to a different generation of learners now. So what if your original target customer is not the right customer? So what if what uh, the product that you have created or the service that you have conceptualized is not working when you tested it in the market? So what can you do? And that's the reason why it's very, very important to know which of which should come first? Is it a business or the plan? Now, question number three would be, so when do I need to write one? Based on a study, the most successful entrepreneurs are those that decided to write their business plan. Listen to this. Six to 12 months after they decided to start a business. So, dapat mauna ang negosyo, itest mo sa market, six months to one year, tsaka kasumulat ng business plan. Eh ngayon, ang tanong, eh sir, kailangan ko po ng business plan for the project. So it becomes hypothetical. But you have to remember, write that plan as a part of your course requirement. But in real life, you need to come up with a business first. Like for example, in the Asian Institute of Management, where my siblings, where I trained and my siblings finished their master's in entrepreneurship, okay, they already have their own businesses when they enrolled. And then they created their business plan based on the guidance of their guru. So the fourth question would be, how long does it take to write one? Once again, based on a study, the optimal time is three months. So less than that would not actually give you adequate time to study the market. But do not extend also beyond three months. Because if you do that, the basis of the study, which would be the information that you gathered, would eventually lose its currency. So kailangan, once a meron kang business plan, sinulat mo siya ng tatlong buwan, okay? kailangan current yung mga sources mo. Because after three months, well, the information will lose its currency. It's no longer applicable in the market. So your analysis would already be passe. Okay, so always remember the now is very, very important when you are setting up an enterprise. So think about this class. So the question would be, do I need to quickly write a plan or not writing one at all? That should never be the strategy. Write one at the right time. So remember, write at the right time. Okay, write at the right time. And the right time is within six to 12 months after you started your business. Okay. So the real key to succeeding in business is being flexible and responsive to opportunities. So the, we have a lot of clients internationally. And one thing that they like when we deal with them is that we cater to their needs. We turn our uh, projects or our products into a customized thing, something that is personal, something that is based on what our clients or customers would need. Otherwise, if you just prepare something as, as a standard as what you think would be working, no, 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 no. That's gonna, not going to hit in the market. So if we're talking to, and what do I usually do? If we're talking to, for example, Indians, I immerse myself in India. For a while, I have to know their culture to create a customized teaching and learning environment, okay? So that flexibility and that ability, your ability to respond to your market, specifically when the opportunities come, would eventually propel you to succeed. But remember, it's not an overnight thing. You have to do it consistently. Okay, so question number five, what are the processes involved in business planning? So you have creation of business model, feasibility analysis, or and full business plan. And you would be asking me, what are these? These are all Greek to us. We are nurses. We're not supposed to be talking about this. But hey, you are 
in an entrepreneurial course. So let's begin to talk about this one by one. When I say a business model, it's a design, a plan on how the business will generate profit. In essence, it identifies the product, services, target market, and projected expenses. We're going to talk about this, and I'm going to discuss the 12 common business models that you could actually play with when you are creating or conceptualizing a business. We'll have that in our next video. Next, a feasibility analysis which is the process of determining if a business idea is viable. In essence, you're trying to be practical. Sometimes, some businesses would be too good to be true. Di ba? Parang, there's just too good to be true. Ganon. Can't take my eyes off you. So, it requires testing your product or service, evaluating your management team if they are aligned to what the market would require in terms of agility, and their intellectual ability to respond to the needs of the market, assessing the market readiness for your concept. So maraming magagandang produkto that fails when they're launched because the market is simply not ready for it. Well, like me, and dami-dami ko rin namang mga ano, failures in terms of designing products. I created the software, introduced it in Canada. It was evaluated so good. And then we introduced it in another country and it was evaluated as bad. <laughs> okay, What's the difference? The difference is the software got affected by the internet speed. Okay, in that specific country. Oo nga naman, eh masyadong heavy ang images, hindi nila ma-download. Eh di sasabihin nila bad, okay? So you have to know your market. Your market has to be ready for your product, for you to succeed. Hindi lang nakaisip ka na panaginipan mo, ginaya mo yung kapitbahay mo, okay? Then nagnegosyo ka na. That's not the way to do it. And of course, your feasibility analysis would also require you to estimate the financial viability. So magkano ba ang kikitain mo? Enough ba yun to cover okay, the resources that you need to run the business? Okay, More on that in our next video. Now, question number six would be, so what is there for a business plan? So it describes the proposed project accurately just accurately but attractively because you are supposed to be submitting your business plan to would-be investors, angel investors who would want to put in their money into your business so you can run it. So therefore, your business plan is an internal planning tool. Yes, and in some, a business plan is a document that describes the business and the industry the market strategies you're going to implement, the sales potential, the competitive analysis, as well as your company's long-term goals and objectives. And this could be revised okay, frequently. Remember, a plan needs to be revisited and revised based on existing market conditions. But at this point in time, where everything is volatile, uncertain, and uncertain. So it's, act, it's actually very, very difficult to decipher okay, what should be your long-term goals. You have to play it by the ear. In other words, gut feel, kapain mo anong kailangan ng market. So kahit kailangan nila ang produkto mo, kung wala silang perang pambili ng produkto mo. So the problem would be, you may not be uh, preferred because what they prefer to have at the moment would just be uh, to meet their physiologic needs. So in essence, wala mo ng mga luxury items ngayon. Okay? So question number seven, why is there a need for a business plan? Well, first and most important reason, it is needed for long-range planning. Kailangan wag myopic ang tingin sa pagninegosyo. Look at yourself in terms of what the future would be for you. And then second, it provides a roadmap for the business from conception to creation. So you will be following simple steps so that everything that you will do will be geared towards one direction. That's growing your business. Kasi ang pagkakamali minsan ng mga young entrepreneurs, they feel that they are superman. So sila na ang may-ari, sila na rin ang, kumbaga may-ari ng restaurant, sila na rin nagluluto, sila ang chef. Baka gusto na rin nila, sila na rin Sila na rin ang waiter at security guard. In other words, taong bahay. No, 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 no. That's not the concept of entrepreneurship. When you are an entrepreneur, your goal should be how do you grow your business? So your goal should be growing the business. 
Okay? Don't get so trapped and chained into certain things that would stop you from growing your business. But always remember, do not bite more than what you could chew. I've been there. I've done that. I've run an international company. I've done that. But the point is, at the end of the day, ang tanong, you want it, but is it really what you need? And what I learned in life is that no matter how much you try, you cannot own the world. So know when to exit. Cherish your moment in time. When you are being acknowledged and recognized as the best entrepreneur of that point in time, that's your moment in time. That can never be erased in history. You've earned your place in this world. So you don't have to stay there for long. And you never block other success. When you become successful, acknowledge that that just would be a fleeting moment. Okay? You are not supposed to stay there forever because the universe is not designed that way. Remember, even the mighty dinosaurs eventually became extinct. So 50 years from now, you will be forgotten. Okay? Not unless you're Colonel Sanders of KFC. He still had the image on the box. Remember the story about that? But what is important, therefore, is that you are following a series of steps. And when you are following the series of steps, you are empowering yourself to make the necessary decisions to, go your en to grow your enterprise, which means... okay. What your enterprise would look like several years from its conception would be a product of the decisions you'll make along the way. Okay, one of the common dilemmas of entrepreneur would be, so how will I package my enterprise or my product? Should it be market driven or should it be technology driven? So first and foremost, let's understand the terminologies. What do you mean by market driven? So it's based on an understanding of the market and reacting to the opportunities that the market is presenting. When you say technology-driven, it's based on the company's technical expertise. You're doing this because you're a good um, speaker. You're doing it because you're a good innovator. So in order for a business enterprise to succeed, how should it be? Should it be market-driven or should it be technology-driven? Well, I go with the experts it has to be market driven. Because even if you come up with an innovation, you show the world your technical abilities, if there's no market for it, then you don't get a return on your investment. So study the market, that's basic, okay? So a business plan must describe the present state of your company, the current needs and the expected future of the business. So it answers the questions, where are we now? Where do we want to get to in the next uh, one year, in the next three years, in the next five years, in the next 10 years? And how are we going to get there? So you have to have little steps every day that eventually leads to the final goal, okay? So write the business plan, therefore, from the viewpoint or the perspective of the market. Okay, remember, come up with a business that's market-driven. From the perspective of the, of the investor, remember, the investor would want profit. Okay, And of course, from the producer, if you are the producer. Sometimes you are the investor and also the producer. Okay, So in essence, you have to consider this question. Most investors would ask you, how long does it take for your product to pay for itself in decreased production costs? So if you would say, well, in three months, I... Sobrang mabilis yun. Nag-ROI ka kagad in three months. Anong negosyo meron ka? Okay? Baka hindi maniwala investors mo. Pag sinabing in six months, okay, that's a good idea. So explain to us. You have to know the details on how to convince your investors that indeed, okay, your enterprise could generate the revenue that, such that in six months, you'll now have your return of investment. So remember, a realistic business plan should specify the number of potential customers, the size of the business, and its appropriateness to the product services. So what do you mean by that? Well, my opinion, may mga negosyo talaga that should only remain micro or small. Once in-expand mo yan sa business as a large scale na siya, 
And the lifestyle becomes difficult for the owner to adjust into. Kasi pag ginawa mong corporate na ang iyong setting, so meron ka ng lawyer, meron ka ng accountant, meron ka lang internal auditor, meron ka ng external auditor. Aba, katakot-takot na logistical needs yan every month. Lahat yan sinusweldohan mo. Eh kung hindi ka sanay sa ganun, you're talking to a lot of people. So huwag ka nang mag-large scale. Okay? Okay, so maintain the size of the business where you're comfortable. At at the end of the day, people would say, aling ganda ng business mo, sana palakihin mo ito. But at the end of the day, the question is, again, go back to yourself. Go back to your core. What is yourself telling you? Saan ka ba contento? Saan ka ba masaya? Kasi kung pinalaki mo yan, tapos hindi ka na masaya. Because you don't have time for yourself anymore. So what is the essence of all of this? Diba? So what will it profit a man? If he gains the whole world, then eventually loses himself. Okay? So always remember to just have the right fit. So, sir, paano ba mag-approximate? Kunwari, you plan to come up with parang ogi-dogi, dati ni Ogi Alkasi, di ba? Bibenta ka ng hotdog. So, anong target customers mo? Well, it could be students in a specific school. So, you look for a location in which it's near very... Uh, a lot of schools and it's it's very convenient for students to pass by your um, shop if you are selling like ogidogi sandwiches, okay? And then kunwari, okay, ang traffic, say for example, would be 100. So how many of that 100 should be your target when you're starting? So ipapakilala pa lang ng business sir, siguro out of 100, masaya na ako kung merong 10 tao. Okay, 10 tao, okay, magkano kaya ang baon nun? Okay? So kung estudyante ang baon, isang daan, magkano doon ang gagastusin sa sandwich? So kung 20, o sige, 20 katao times 10, that's gonna be 200 pesos. Okay? Ngayon, hindi pa pupunta sa lahat sa yon, kasi you have to survey the environment. Sino ang kaagaw mo in terms of selling your merchandise? So meron din dyan, ka rin din rin nagtitinda din ng hot ay na egg sandwich. Meron pang isa dyan na nagtitinda rin ng uh, donut. So lahat yon kaagaw mo yon. So kung tatlo kayo doon, nakahilera, so yung yung 100, sorry, yung 10 katao na mag spend ng 20 pesos each, which is equivalent to 200, should be divided by 3. So, ang share ng bawat isa sa inyo, out of 200, could be, for example, 66.6 pesos. Okay? So, yun yung income mo per day. Ganun mo dapat siya ipoproject para makita ng investors mo paano. I'm not saying that that is a standard formula. You can come up with your own benchmark. Okay? Uh, that's just a microcosm, an example of the real world out there. Kaya nga yung iba, before you put up a business inside the mall, always remember this. Okay? The mall would require 30% of your income or your monthly rental, whichever is higher. Because you used to operate businesses inside the mall. But the good thing is that okay, SM actually... Um, waived okay, the profit percentage. They just get rentals from us. Okay? So, ganon. So, which means, okay, if you would want to have an idea of how do you, would you plan your business to be, well, you just have to take a look at the figures from the DTI website. Okay, look at this. One interesting thing. We only have 0.49% of large enterprises in the country and 99.51% are micro, small, medium enterprises. What does that tell us? So ilan na ang multinational mo? 0.49, wala pang 1%. So out of the 957,620 9, businesses, almost a million businesses, majority ay, kumbaga, sari-sari store or whatever. Okay? So... Ano kayang mga negosyo yan, sir? Okay? Look, micro, the 850,000 plus. Small, 98,126. Medium, 4,716. Then, eventually, you take a look at the industry. Okay? Look, okay, a larger percentage, 46.74%, almost 50%, would be wholesale and retail trade. Okay? Nandiyan dyan yung repair of motor vehicles, motorcycles. Kaya pala, marami nagpuput up ng mga, mga bicycle shops, motorcycle shops, motorcycle vulcanizing. Tapos, wholesale. Kaya pala maraming nag-online reselling. Oh, correct. Kaya dumami yan. Okay? You see a lot of them. Ngayon, ang tanong ko lang, marami nang nandiyan, nandiyan ka papupunta. <laughs> 
Do something different, okay? Look the other way, okay? Now, let's take a look at the other industries, okay? Meron tayong financial and insurance activities. So, kung gusto mong maging finance advisor, 4.7% yan. Other service activities, 6.5%. Ano kaya ang other services na yan? Pwede bang personal care services yan? Yung mga spa? Pwede. Manufacturing, yan, mga garments, okay? Uh, souvenir shops, okay? That's gonna, that is approximately 11.64%. And of course, accommodation food service activities, 14.07. So those who own hotels, resorts, okay? So hanapin mo kung saan ka may skill. Ano yung gift mo that you can actually align with whichever these interest, industries would need. Kasi tinitignan nila dyan, usually mga tumitingin, ha, boom pala yan. Yung nagtitinda ng motorcycle parts. Nung nakita ng, nang nakita ng isang opportunity yan, nagput up siya. And then nakita nung kapitbahay, ay boom, nagaya din siya. E so kung lahat na sila doon sa hanay na yun, nagtitinda na ng motorcycle parts, eventually magpapatayan yan, magpapababaan ng presyo yan. So the market forces would dictate on them now. And that's not a good thing to do, especially if you're starting out. Okay? Now, consider this. Most investors would want a profit of 4.5 times their investment in five years. So which means, kunwari, pag nag-invest sila sa'yo ng isang milyon, dapat sa limang taon, 4.5 million na yon. Okay? Question, paano mo gagawin yon? So how will you yield that profit? Okay? Kaya nga tayo, meron tayong mga tinatawag na kamag-anak loan. Okay? When I started my business, I was just lucky that my mom, okay, of course, isinanla ang pwesto, humiram sa tita. Ganun niya ako sinuportahan. And I'm not ashamed to share that because that's the way it is. Mahirap lang kami. Diba? Natapos nga ako ng nursing na 10 pesos lang ang allowance ko per day when I was studying at UST. So which simply means you can rise above all these things if you make the right decisions. And that begins with good business planning and writing it at the right time. So the last, okay, and the eighth question would be, how long should a business plan be? You will be surprised because in our next video, I'd show you, you could have two options to write it. It could be as short as two pages and it could be as long as 25 pages if you want all the 10 components to be there. So if you are dreaming big now, and you are ready to work hard, you are ready to make it happen, always remember to start small. As they say, great things start from small beginning. There's no problem with dreaming big for as long as you start small. So you can take control and study your enterprise before putting it out there in the market. So with that, this is your mentor Ray saying thank you. And I'll see you in our next set of videos specifically on business models and business planning. Thank you for engaging with me today.